I had seen these type of lasers floating around on my YouTube feed for a little while now and I was really curious on the type of laser it was. Then out of the blue, I had the company called Monport approach me and said, hey, I've got a laser for you to have a look at. Previously, I had reviewed a number of different lasers on this channel. I had a couple of uh, CO2 lasers as well as some diode lasers, but this unit was something completely different. This is what you call a fiber laser. Unlike the other two types of lasers I've reviewed, this type of laser cuts into metal. This particular unit comes with the usual accessories needed to run the laser, like that data cable, also known as a printer cable. Comes with a USB stick as well as a USB-C adapter, as well as some brackets in there and some uh, bolts. And one of the most important things in this box is a power lead. Nothing's going to happen without that. That's also a marking pedal. Some safety glasses so you don't burn your eyes out. A set of Allen keys so you can put the unit together and some sample business cards made out of metal that you can etch. First thing I noticed when I was unboxing the unit was how sturdy and how well it was constructed. The base and elevator are made out of aluminium and to my American friends that's aluminium. The base is 550 by 350 millimeters. And for the first part of the assembly, I needed to connect the elevator to the base using these M8 uh, 12 millimeter screws. You also get a set of Allen keys, but I'm personally not gonna use them. I'm not a big fan of Allen keys. I'd rather use these um, hex bits on the end of a screwdriver handle. This tool is far easier to use than Allen keys. I loosely screwed in the four screws and then tightened them with that tool. I then lowered the platform that's on the 500 millimeter elevator and then rather than trying to balance the laser head on top of that platform, I decided to spread out the weight um, across the platform as well as that box. I then went in with these uh, M6 12mm screws and screwed the laser head down to the platform. That whole arm has channels so you can slide it forwards and backwards and slide it in and out on that platform. This lever is used to lock in the platform into place so once you've adjusted the height you can then tighten it and it won't move. And that, believe it or not, was the whole unit assembled. Now that arm, the laser arm, is connected via a permanent cable that goes to the back of the machine. Next we need to plug in the power and it's a standard kettle lead that plugs in into the power socket there which is fused. This is the pedal that's used for marking the material that you wish to cut or engrave. And that just pops straight in and screws up tight. Next, we use the data cable. Again, like I mentioned earlier, it's also a printer cable and that pops right into the back there. And the other end goes into your computer or laptop. There are three steps to turn on the machine. First, we need to switch on the laser, then the Galvo power supply and finally the main power switch. Now, if everything's been uh, connected properly, you get two little red dots. These are not the laser beams, these are focusing beams. So what you need to do is to adjust those two dots until they meet together right in the middle. There are two ways you can focus the laser. The first way and the easiest way is you turn the lever on top of that elevator and then you adjust the two beams until they meet like I said earlier. And it's just a matter of turning, turning, turning until they join right now. But the good news is if you go too far, which is easy to do, you can just turn the wheel back again and just realign them. With all the hardware set up, let's move on to the software. You get everything you need on a USB stick, including the drivers and software. And the first one I installed was the Cypress USB driver. And there's also the laser driver in one of those folders, which I did off camera. This bit is pretty straightforward. It's a matter of going, agree, next, 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 and it's done. On the USB stick, you also get the PDF files there, which gives you the instructions, or basically it's the manual. Also the software, which is EasyCAD. I personally use Lightburn, and I'm gonna install it on that because I already know the software, so I really don't wanna learn another one. Then once I open up Lightburn, head over to Devices there on the right-hand side, and we've got our little dialog box that comes up. The next step is to create manually, and you'll see the third one from the top there, BSL Fiber. That's the driver I'll be using for the laser. 
Hit next, then you put in the X and Y lens there, which is 175 millimeters. Once those values are inserted, you can then hit next. Then this dialog box tells us what settings we put in there and we can hit finish and then OK. With the device drivers all installed, we now need to go into device settings to add a few inputs in there. Right here is where I switched over from my CO2 laser to the mono port one and then I've run into a bit of a snag. Normally when you switch over devices, it's an instant switch over. But for some reason, light burn just froze. Well, probably a more accurate thing is started hanging. And you can see it took a little while for it to swap over to the new drivers of the mono port. Now, when I went up to the menus, I was getting no response. Or rather, to be more precise, it was really lagging with anything that I was trying to do. So it turned out to be a bit of a head scratcher. The only thing I could do was to quit out of Lightburn, see if I can solve my problems. The only way I could do that was to control alt delete, bring up the task manager and close down the software. First thing I thought, maybe it's a compatibility issue with Lightburn. So I thought I'd give EasyCAD a bit of a go. This software is supplied for free on the USB stick, but it didn't give me any relief. I ended up getting errors left, right and center with it as well. I even swapped over USB cables and still didn't help. So I swallowed my pride and sent off an email to support. The great news is considering the time difference, they were very quick to respond. Great work Monoport on that one. Turns out the issue I may have is either loose or a faulty USB data port on the back of the machine. From the advice I was given, it seemed to be a fairly quick and easy um, fix. First thing I need to do was pull off the sticker for the Galva power supply, because behind that is a screw. Then I unscrewed the first three screws on the front, went over to the back section, then unscrewed those ones as well. While we're here, take note of that little plate with all the settings on there. That'll come in handy a bit later. The top just pops off as easy as that. Then I removed the internal USB lead. I then connected the USB lead coming straight out of the computer into the back of that little circuit board. And then it was just a matter of switching everything back on again. The key, the button and the power switch and we were ready to see how it goes and it worked perfectly. Turns out the data port wasn't faulty, it was just a loose internal USB lead. And you can see all my menus are back and we're ready to go. So let's finally input the last of those device settings. The settings we need to adjust are the red dot, the Galva 1, Galva 2 and some jump setting defaults there. Now where we get those settings is from that plate that I just showed you on the back of the machine. This process I don't think can be any simpler. Just take the information that's on the back there on that plate and transfer it into the device settings of the dialog box. This section should only take you about five to 10 minutes to do. And once you've completed that, head over to the next tab, which is the ports and laser settings. And all that information is available on the PDF file or the little menu that you receive inside that brown box. And again, straightforward, just transfer that information into each section. Now that the hardware and software is all set up, we're ready to do some tests. And for the test, I'm gonna use the old Scale Model Geek logo. Of course I would. <laughs> now it's awfully big, so we need to shrink it down. Now I'll eventually shrink that down to about 30 mil in size. I also made sure I centered the character right in the middle of the page. I then hit the frame button, just so I can see where to place the metal. And here I'm using some galvanized steel, which by the way, turns out not a good thing to use because it lets off some nasty fumes. I didn't know that till I finished. For the test, I was just using scrap metal that I found laying around the studio. With the settings I had, it took about three and a half minutes to etch this metal. Now maximum speed is 7,000 millimeters per second. And you know what, when it finished, I wasn't quite happy with it. It kind of looked a bit blurry and the beard area wasn't very, well, wasn't filled very well. I did a whole bunch of tests on the other side as well with different um, settings. 
and I decided I need to refocus that laser. Now I'm using the se second system and for that the metal ruler that was supplied and I'm going to adjust the head to the recommended 393 millimeters from the material that I'm going to use. And it's a matter of adjusting that wheel so I can raise and lower the head till I get it to the right height as I mentioned earlier 393 millimeters which is also on that tag on the back of the machine. I then lock it into place with that locking lever and we're ready to give it a test run once again. This time I'm using some aluminium that I had laying around. The laser lifespan is roughly about 100,000 hours. So it's gonna last quite a while. After the refocus, you can see how much sharper that engraving is on that metal. I did have a bit of a play with the settings just to give me an idea of the strength and uh, type of finishes I would get with the laser. And the main differences between all three is how deep the laser actually engraves. Next piece of material I decided to have a test with is some 3mm translucent acrylic. The first pass at it, the settings were just way too weak and really didn't do anything other than cut through the protective film. Second time around, I decided to double the strength of the laser and the speed and <laughs> well I kind of went a bit overboard with that lot there because all of a sudden everything in the piece just melted. It was just a bit of a mess. And unfortunately that was the only piece of acrylic I had in the studio. So I have to go out and revisit this uh, again at a later stage once I get hold of some more acrylic. The next test piece was the supplied metal business cards and um, it's 0.02 millimeters thick and the first run even though I had it set really low was still way too powerful and what it did was not only did it burn almost right through the card but because of the heat the whole card just warped. So for the second time around I completely turned everything right down because of the thickness of the metal and it came out so nice the lettering the image was so crisp and also I had no warping whatsoever in the card I found my first project with this laser I'll be etching a whole bunch of business cards for myself really love the finish of this my last test is a piece of aluminium that I had sprayed with some paint now this paint is a very special type it's what's called an anodized coating Effectively what it is, it's just a translucent paint. It's made by Duplicolor and available in a whole bunch of different colors. And this is a test piece I set up from a, one of my older lasers. The settings were way too high for this particular job because it took about 40 minutes to cut this out or rather etch it out. But boy, did it look good. I love that look of that aluminum popping through the anodized blue. Really great finish to it. My final thoughts, I think this is a really good laser. It's a very different type of laser to what I already own. If you're after a side hustle, this is a great machine to own. You can make personalized dog tags, keychains, and like I showed you earlier, business cards as well. Other than the issue I had with the USB cable, the rest of the setup was really easy and straightforward. If you are seriously interested in the machine, I do have an affiliate code in the description. Go check it out, you can save some money. In the meantime, check out some of my other videos. And I hope to see you in my next video.